Today in the news, AMD fixes more things, the RX 5500 gets an XT, and Windows 10X looks different. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. It looks like the uh, newest microcode update is going to make even more improvements to their 3000 series of CPUs. As we know, third gen Ryzen had a rocky start when it comes to clock speeds. We all knew that the uh, advertised boost clocks were only really a single core thing, and while it might not make a huge difference, we all felt it was misleading advertising. AMD said that they found a bug in the microcode that caused a 50 megahertz discrepancy, and they tried to fix that issue with the microcode AGISA1003 ABBA. Earlier this month, we got a hint from MSI's live stream that their next update would also bring improvements to clock speeds, but also improve on other things. Well, last week, ASRock pushed a beta version of the AGISA microcode for a few of their motherboards. Compared to uh, the AGISA version 1003 ABBA, the new 1004 seems to add even more to that with an extra 50 megahertz. Computer Computerbase tested both versions of the BIOS with a 3800X and the extra speed was added across all 8 cores. That might seem like a small bump, but it's actually pretty significant. 50 MHz on all cores is a lot, especially if this improvement happens on all of the 3rd gen Ryzen processors. The higher end 3900X for example would get quite a hefty boost. Another improvement in the microcode is on the boot side of things. Tom's hardware tested it and boot up times improved significantly significantly on the X570 platform as seen on this chart. Boot up times are not that important, especially when we're talking about less than a minute on a desktop, but it's nice to see things get faster. Some board manufacturers already started rolling out the update, but don't worry, if your board doesn't have it yet, it will probably be available by the end of November. Also with AMD, after the announcement of the RX 5500, we saw that it didn't take advantage of the full Navi 14 die. It has 22 compute units, whereas Navi 14 supports up to 24. Now, to me, it didn't really make sense to have two different cards with only two compute units as a difference. I know Nvidia has that with the 1660 and 1660 Ti, but there was a clear difference in terms of memory with these two cards. Well, it seems like I was wrong because MSI just registered an RX 5500 XT at the EEC. With 24 compute units, this card will have 128 more stream processors than the non-XT model, and like the 5700 and 5700 XT, it will likely get a clock speed bump. Memory wise, it's likely going to be an 8GB GPU. Moving on to some Microsoft news, earlier this month, the company showcased their prototype for the Surface Neo, a dual 9-inch screen, sort of small form factor laptop. With it, they also said that they would come out with a new version of Windows 10 optimized for that form factor called Windows 10X. We didn't have any extra information about the new OS at the event, but that changed over the weekend. Walking Cat on Twitter found an internal document about the OS, which was on a public-facing Azure website. Now, Microsoft pulled the page pretty quickly, but we got to get some tidbits out of it. First, the semi-new OS will also be available for regular laptops. The UI is also pretty much the only thing that changes. The start menu will apparently be renamed and replaced by something called the launcher. It looks like something straight out of Android Search or Apple Spotlight on phones. You have a search bar at the top, which does web and local searches. Under that, there's a grid of apps, which I assume will be customizable, and under the that is a recommended section for recently and frequently used apps or documents. The bar at the bottom seems to be customizable, but it's clear we're already far from the good old taskbar. So I like that Microsoft is uh, re you know, revamping the UI for Windows 10X, but I think it should be reserved for smaller devices. At 12 or 17 inches for a single screen, laptops don't really need a new UI. Plus, 10X might not work for every dual screen laptops. For example, the HP Omen X2S has a fairly useless second screen, and the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo has a form factor that might not work with it either. What do you guys think? 
Moving on to some gaming news, Blizzard just had a major leak for the follow-up to Overwatch. Slasher on Twitter received insider info on the sequel called Overwatch 2, and the game looks packed full of new stuff. There's apparently going to be a proper PvE, new maps, new heroes, and even a new mode called Push for Competitive will be added. The PvE section will feature hero-specific talents, a fleshed-out leveling system, and more. And while I'm pretty excited about the game, I don't think it's going to go too well for Blizzard. With everything that happened in the last month or so, they're going to be under the microscope. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any comments or questions, you can leave them down below. I'll answer pretty much every comment on under this video. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay for my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm going to have to go and uh, pick up some leaves because the seven trees in my yard just decided to shed all at the same time. Take care. Boy, you need